evening, I will talk to you about the most complicated subject known to man. Well, actually, known to men. Okay? My hope is by the end of this six minutes, things will be crystal, crystal clear. That subject is women. <laughs> Obviously, to state that in six minutes, I will be able to clarify everything that you need to know about women. That's impossible. But my goal for this crystal clear speech is not to just let you men into our world um, so that you can use it against us. It's not dating 101 or anything. But my goal is that with a better understanding of who we are and who the Lord created us to be, it will help your relationships with us and friendships, and you can help us women flourish and become what we were created to be. So before I begin, I want to give credit to the book that I got all of this from. It's called Captivating by Stacey Eldridge. So in her manual, it says, misunderstanding is a common ailment of the human mind. People often misunderstand each other because of lack of clarity. So as I look around this room, clearly there are more men than women, and when there are both men and women in the room, there is bound to be a misunderstanding. So, <laughs> men, whether the woman in your life is a Cinderella, a Joan of Arc, a Mary Magdalene, or an Oprah, um, there are three things that you will find that every woman in her heart of hearts longs for. Okay? The first one is to be romanced. Second one, to play an irreplaceable role in a great adventure. And three, the third one, to unveil beauty. These are the things that make women come alive. Okay, first one, to be romance. As a young girl, one of my favorite games to play was, besides house, of course, is this game called Damsels in Distress. Okay, so my family used to live on the church campus, and um, there are a lot, I don't know if you remember the campus, there's a lot of gardens and a lot of like jungle looking places, and my friends and I would pretend that we were this beauty and like this damsel abducted, uh, abducted by evil men, and then this strong, young, dark, and handsome man would come and climb the highest mountain, swim the deepest ocean, and rescue us from danger. And I don't know what it is, but we just simply love being wanted for and being fought for. Um, now, being romanced isn't all a woman wants, okay? Our existence is not dependent on whether or not we are being romanced by a man, but you have to know that we want this, okay? There is just something so deep inside of us that makes us want to be desired. Something that makes us want to be pursued by the one who loves us, to be someone's priority. And at some core place, so deep within us, we want to be seen, wanted, and pursued. Okay, secondly, um, an irreplaceable role in a great adventure. So I have something to confess to you guys. I, maybe you know, but I really like manly movies like Gladiator, Braveheart. I just watched 300 a while ago. <laughs> and um, I don't know if you remember in, um, in Braveheart, William Wallace, he had this awesome freedom speech. I've been watching it on YouTube like for two weeks now. And so I have a monologue. I'm just going to say it to you because it's really powerful. So William Wallace is in front of everyone and he goes, fight and you may die. Run and you will live at least a while. And dying in your bed many years from now, would you be willing to trade all the days for this day, just one chance to come here as young men and tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they will never take our freedom? So whenever I watch that, maybe I just Mel Gibson, but I just I want to be there. I just want to be there, and I want to fight with the Englishmen. But there's something inside a heart of a woman that's fierce. I mean, simply insult her children, her best friend, her man, and you'll get a taste of it. We women are warriors. We want to be something. We want to be a part of something grand and important, and we want to play a vital role to play. Um, but we don't want to just go for adventure's sake. We want to do it because it requires us for others. So lastly, beauty to unveil. Um, so a couple of weeks ago was the Super Bowl, and I don't of the ones who went to the Super Bowl. Of course, you watch it's men, mostly men, right? But Annika and Razel were there. And um, they were they were playing dress up and they were lips wearing lipstick, dancing and twirling around, and just something in their young hearts wants to know that they are lovely, um, verbally or not. Wearing pretty dresses or watching football, you know, we want to know that we are beautiful. And when I talk about beauty, I'm not just talking about outward <coughs> beauty. I'm talking about something more. 
a desire to be captivating in the depths of who we are. So like you think about Snow White, she was beautiful, but she was good, you know. Cinderella was beautiful, but there was something more. And you, even the women are church, so I, I'm going to pick on you guys. Vaname, you know, she's beautiful, but she's so compassionate. And like when she deals with like elderly, she's just wonderful. Judy, she's beautiful, but she has this drive and desire to like know the Lord's heart. Linda is the most sincere person. I can trust her with anything. Debbie, she's strong and she clings to the Lord. My mom, she's very patient and like has an abundant love for her children. And Laura, she is like very pure and simple, like simply devoted to Christ. And just we we desire to possess a beauty that is worth pursuing, worth fighting for. And th this is the core of who we truly are. So ladies, just in case no one has told you that you are beautiful. Um, so to make it simple and clear for you men, we want to be romanced, so romance us, okay? We want to be a part of an adventure and have an irreplaceable role, so take us with you. And we want to know we are beautiful. So don't tell us, just, you can tell us we're beautiful, but don't just do that, but tell us what our worth is. And don't just say, oh yes, you're nice, but because we'll know you're lying. But really, 